This is Pastor David Langford. We'd like to speak to you for just a few moments today. I want to encourage you to go to our website and register for the conference. And the theme of the conference is entitled Age of Deception. Age of Deception. The conference is April the 5th through the 7th. That is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, Registration will begin at 12 noon on Thursday. So we invite you to get there early to get your registration and get your wristband that will show and authenticate that you have registered and you have the right and the privilege to come into the assembly building and be with us. Also, we're going to be serving communion Sunday after I get through ministering the word of God. That will then be followed up by water baptism. Uh, If you're wanting to be water baptized, come bring a change of clothes with you. I ask that you dress very modestly because once you get into the pool and you get wet, your clothing will look entirely different. So I ask you to please, especially the ladies, to dress very modestly uh, for the baptismal service. As you well know, in this conference, we're going to be having some great, great speakers. Of course, myself will be speaking. Steve Quayle will be speaking. Russ Dizdar will be speaking. Irvin Baxter, Hugo DeGarris, Jimmy D. Smith, And, of course, Joe and Doug Hagman will be there with us, and they will have a segment as well. We want you to register, please. Help us, support us in this endeavor, and I'm confident God will bless you. Uh, I know we're uh, around Christmas time, and registration has been somewhat slow, but I'm believing God for it to pick up because you couldn't find a better place uh, to have a conference than right here in the Hickory, North Carolina area. Uh, the, the conference is going to be held at the Hickory Metro Convention Center. If you'll simply go to our website, uh, the restaurants, the motels, everything is right there. You can see it. You're just three minutes off of Interstate I-40. And because of the accessibility of so many interstates, I-26, I-40, I-77, and I-85, This is a great location, a great place. And let me encourage you again, the significance and the importance of registering because sometimes these conferences sell out. You can only put so many people in the building. Then people will come back and say, why didn't you guys have a greater vision? Why didn't you anticipate more registry? Uh, We have to buy and rent the facilities according to the registration. Uh, So that's why it's important that you register early to help us make a a pragmatic and prudent decision regarding this conference. Again, the conference dates are April the 5th, 6th, and 7th. The conference is entitled Age of Deception, and I want to encourage you to go and register ASAP. Uh, That'll help us uh, to know how uh, much to uh, material to acquire and to take care of the speakers, their honorariums, and their motels and their eats. So please stand with us, and I'm confident God will bless your heart and bless your life immensely. So go to our website, look under registration. Everything is there to help you to be a part of this great conference. I want to share a letter, uh, two letters actually, that a lady wrote me uh, from Germany. Coffering, Germany. Um, She wrote me a a, a card, and she also wrote the President of the United States. And I wanted to share with you uh, this letter because I think it's very powerful. Uh, The voice of evangelism is literally heard around the world. I got a phone call just the other day from someone in Japan. So the Word of God is getting out, and it's touching the hearts and lives of those who are in a desert and parched place spiritually. That's why we preach uncompromisingly here at the Voice of Evangelism, because so many people want to hear the truth. This letter begins, and the the dear sister's name is Azella, Gazella, Grady and Gazella Whitaker. And she says, Dear Brother David Langford, a little while back we saw you on the internet and heard your speaking, your sermon concerning the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. It is certainly no overstatement to say that we were so very much blessed and encouraged to hear you speak. We copied your name and address as it was given and also the name of your book. It is certainly uh, the uh, very true that what God 
chose that God has chosen a vessel and when he does it will be persecuted and come under pressure other former presidents have done and executed the same principle as our present president does now and orders and everybody nationally and internationally comes against him and seeks to disqualify and impeach him prayerfully we come with thankful hearts for all faithful servants in the United States, that God may indeed raise up a salvation army, prayer warriors, to stand up against the powers of darkness, the liberal movement to undermine the constitutional government of the United States. There is much prayer for the president and his faithful cabinet members for wisdom and strength to battle the national and international opposition, we ourselves can best make us known to you by sending you a copy of a letter which I had written to the president. May our glorious God bless you and your family at this special time of year with such, with much peace and joy. And this is from Grady and Gazella Whitaker. And uh, I wanted to share her letter that she wrote the president of the United States. Again, they are from Koffering, Germany. She says, Dear Mr. President, it is with thanksgiving to our glorious God in Christ Jesus for having appointed you to the highest office of this great nation, the United States of America, that I'm writing this letter to you. To give the proper perspective from the beginning, it is important to let you know that I am quite old. I was born in 1927 in Berlin, Germany, and lived there through the war until the Russian army invaded Berlin in April of 1945. At the age of 17, along with other school friends, we were able to flee and escape from the very brutally acting Russian soldiers. In that time, my dear mother was in a different part of the city and was overcome by the Russian soldiers. She suffered much. My dear father was a reserve army officer and was called to active duty even before the official mobilization date of September the 1st, 1939. With the Russian army invasion, along with his troops, my father was captured and sent as a prisoner to the Caucasus Mountains in Russia. All communications in Germany had totally broken down and there were no means to contact family members or friends. The last time I had seen my beloved father was in January of 1945, during the last time of his leave before returning to the battlefield. He told me very firmly to avoid falling into the hands of the Russians, but try to go on to an American occupation. He also warned me of German SS. And so under the most difficult circumstances, including sleeping in open fields, we hitchhiked to Sarveria, where American troops were stationed. Through different moves, I ultimately ended up in Hamburg because of my ability to speak English I learned in school and with the intervention of a kind American soldier, I was able to obtain a job in the office of the American Red Cross. As a replacement for one day, I worked at the reception, at which time my husband Grady walked in in January 1948 and looking at me, he asked me, where did you come from? For being in the office, he never saw me before. About three months later, after just seeing and talking together, he asked me to marry him. And here I am to the point why I am even writing this letter. Grady explained to me that it was hard for a, an American to marry a German having lived under the Nazi regime, and that it would take a long process to gain the permission to marry a German from Nazi Germany, at least a year. That was, of course, an obvious attempt to prevent a marriage. In addition, I myself was not prepared to get married, but Grady was very loving and patiently explained that if I would give him consent, he would leave and that there would be no risk. And so on this basis, I agreed and Grady got what he asked for. A little more than a year later, the request came back approved and the way was free. But then my father, as a prisoner of war, being in Russia, I could never find it in my heart to get married, leave Germany while he was in Russian prison camp. And so my answer was no. At this time, Grady's time in Germany was up. He was due to return to America. However, in his personal despair, 
he managed to contact a general in Frankfurt personally, sharing his sad story, to which this kind general showed mercy and arranged for Grady's being able to extend his time in Germany. Almost a year later, my dear father was released from prison in 1949, returning to my mother in Berlin, where he was told where I then lived because of then existing situations between East and West, Russian and American occupied territories. He managed under more difficult circumstances to cross the border line by foot through the, uh, through the winter snow over the Haraz Mountains. And on one Sunday morning, my dear father, quite weakened from all that which was being done to him, stood in front of the door. Dear Mr. President, only God knows the overwhelming surprises and joy to see my dear father standing in front of me. Yes, he gave his blessing to Mary Grady, an American soldier. And then after two weeks in the same difficult way, he returned to Berlin to my mother. Under difficult circumstances, my parents managed to get from East Berlin to the western part. From there, they were able to get a plane to Frankfurt. Grady had sent the money for the tickets. So, with both father and mother with us, we got married in Hamburg on March the 18th, 1950, under the stipulation to leave Germany within three months. Grady was then stationed in Fort Meade, Maryland, and we lived in Baltimore. Being married to an American, I had the option to apply for the American citizenship after three years, whereas other immigrants had to wait five years for an application to citizenship. After having received the instruction manuals from the Baltimore courthouse, I began to study the quite complex instructions, including the American Constitution and other difficult tests. On the 18th of March, by God's unmerited favor, we will be able to celebrate our 68th wedding anniversary. We bow before him in worship and eternal thanksgiving. He alone is worthy. Thank you for th taking the time to read this letter. Prayerfully in Christ's love. P.S. Grady is a retired warrant officer and a Vietnam and a Vietnam of the Korean War where he was injured. He also took part of the A-bomb test in 1955 in Camp Desert Rock, Nevada, and experienced its impact. He was born and raised in DeRitter, Louisiana, as the youngest of 11, six boys and five girls by a Christian mother. His father died when Grady was 13. I wanted to share that letter today because it lets you know how there are those who have a profuse thankfulness and thanksgiving for what God has done in their lives. One of the great things concerning Bible prophecy is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul said that men would be unthankful and men would be unholy. I want to encourage you today to always be mindful that your help and your strength comes from the Lord God of Abraham. When you read letters like this, this couple having now been married 68 years, and you see the tumultuous things that they had to endure and serving Christ faithfully, never wavering, never quitting, never giving up, but enduring unto the end. I want to thank both Grady and Gazella for their letter, uh, blessing me, blessing us, and how that God has touched them through this small ministry. And you, my friend, those of you who love us and support us, help us to literally go around the world and touch the hearts and the lives of many people. Again, in closing today, let me encourage you, please, go to our website and register for this conference entitled The Age of Deception, Age of Deception. The sooner you register, the more quickly we can make the decisions and the process of bringing together the building, the sound system, the video uh, cameras, and all of the things that need to be aggregated and collected for this meeting. I am believing God through the Holy Ghost to touch your heart to touch your life, and to minister to you powerfully. Uh, we're not going to stream this. Our conference will not be streamed, but our conference will have DVDs available to you after the conference. So God bless you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. I always want to be mindful. That, that you are the reason we're able to do what we do in the kingdom of God. And I thank God for your love and your service to the King of glory. Jesus Christ will be a debtor 
to no man. He will owe no man anything. He loves us more than we could ever know. So God bless you again. Please go to our website, www.thevoiceofevangelism.com, and register for the conference entitled Age of Deception. The Voice of Evangelism with David Langford is brought to you by the faithful listeners and supporters throughout America. If you're looking for an uncompromising message, we invite you to tune in each week to The Voice of Evangelism. For more information, write to The Voice of Evangelism at P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020. That's P.O. Box 502, Kayser, North Carolina, 28020.